In this video, we're going to be looking at polar curves. So now, now that we have an idea of how to plot polar coordinates, we can talk about a curve consisting of all of those um, different polar coordinate points. So the, when we're talking about um, the graph of a polar equation, um, a polar equation will be r equals f of theta, and that will consist of all points p that have at least one polar representation whose coordinates satisfy r equation. Okay, so let's look at some of the basic curves in terms of our polar coordinates. You know, when we're thinking about our rectangular coordinates, we had our basic equations be things like, you know, x equals 2 or y equals negative 1. So now in terms of our um, polar coordinates, we could have something like r equals some number a, like r equals 3. So r equals 3 means that um, r is always 3, so I'm always a distance of 3 from the center, and theta could be anything. So this is a circle, whoops, centered at the origin of radius 3. Okay, so r equals 3, this is a circle of radius 3 centered at the origin. Okay, r equals negative 3 would also give the same graph. Okay, notice that the Cartesian equation of that sort of graph would be x squared plus y squared equals 9. So for a circle, um, the polar equation is a much simpler equation. So what we're going to start to see here is that for certain kinds of graphs, it's easier to write them in terms of a polar equation than in terms of a um, Cartesian or rectangular equation. So if we're talking about um, some sort of other basic curve here, theta equals some angle b, like theta equals 5 pi 6. What is that? Well, um, I would make an angle of 5 pi 6, which would be somewhere over here. Whoops. 5 pi 6 would be something like this. Okay, so I'm going to be making some angle 5 pi 6, and then r could be anything. So I can go any distance away from the origin, positive or negative distance, um, that would be along that line. So that's how we're getting a line here, on one of our radial lines with this theta equals 5 pi 6. Um, so this is going to be always a line through the origin that's making that particular angle. And if we wanted to figure out the Cartesian equation for that particular line, well, we know that tangent of theta was equal to y over x. So y is going to equal tangent of theta, in this case, tangent of 5 pi 6, which is negative root 3 over 3, and then times x. Okay, so the slope of this line is equal to tangent of the angle. So again, a little bit uglier equation when it's kind of a nice equation in terms of theta. But really, the polar um, equations are most useful for circles and other kinds of loops and things that we're going to see. So let's look at just a couple of examples of going between a um, polar curve and a Cartesian equation. So I want to convert each of these two polar curves to the Cartesian equation just for comparison. So here I've got r equals secant theta. So I know I could write that as 1 over cosine theta. And I know I have a couple of um, different facts that allow me to relate my rectangular and um, polar coordinates. I had x squared plus y squared was r squared. Tangent theta was y over x. x was r cosine theta. y was r sine theta. So I want to see how I can convert r equals 1 over cosine theta to something just in terms of x and y. So I notice that x over r is equal to cosine theta. So I can write this as r equals 1 over x over r, um, which then means I have r equals r over x, or rx equals r. So I can make that rx minus r equals 0, or r times x minus 1 equals 0. But I noticed that um, when I would try to solve that, I would get like r equals 0 or x equals 1. Um, since r is equal to 1 over cosine theta, r will never be 0. So r is not 0. So this is just the same thing as the line x equals 1. Okay, so interesting, x equals 1, nice easy equation in terms of um, our Cartesian equations, but it is represented by r equals secant theta in terms of the polar equations.
So if we look at one more example here, r equals 5 cosine theta, and think about trying to do some sort of conversion. I have r equals 5, I'll replace cosine theta with x over r, so I have r squared equals 5x, and then I can convert r squared to being in terms of our x's and y's by having x squared plus y squared equals 5x. And now this is one of these um, second degree equations like we saw when we were reviewing conics. I have both um, a squared y term and a squared x term. This is going to end up being a circle. So if we do a little bit of completing the square here where I have x squared minus 5x plus y squared equals 0, this is x minus 5 halves squared plus y squared equals 25 over 4. So this turns out to be a circle with center 5 halves comma 0 and radius equals 5 halves. Okay, so we're going to see that that's actually um, a particular type of polar curve, r equals some kind of a cosine theta, will be a circle with center um, a over 2 um, comma 0 and radius a over 2. Okay. So again, we have, in this case for a circle, a sort of simpler equation in terms of our polar curve than we did in terms of our rectangular equations. So we want to just look at doing one sketch of a polar curve um, in this particular video lecture. So one thing that I want to note that will be helpful for doing a lot of um, curve sketching or different kinds of problems with our polar um, curves is um, making use of symmetry. So we have three different kinds of symmetry that can show up. We can have symmetry about the x-axis. So this would happen if I have this point r theta is appearing on my graph and also the point r comma negative theta. Okay, so those would have symmetry about the x-axis. We'd have symmetry about the y-axis if we have r theta on our graph as well as the point um, negative r negative theta or that can also be represented as r comma pi minus theta, so at some point over here. So this is r theta. Um, this point over here, negative r negative theta, because the idea is I could go down here negative theta and then backwards this negative r to get into this quadrant. We could also have symmetry about the pole, about the origin. If I have a point here, this is r theta, and also a point down here of negative r comma theta. Okay, so if we can identify that we have um, these different kinds of symmetries, then that can simplify the problem in, in some cases. So let's just look at one problem of actually doing a sketch of a polar curve. So let's say I want to sketch the graph of the polar curve r equals 4 plus 4 cosine theta, and I'm going to do that using a table of values as well as some symmetry. Okay, so a lot of the symmetry has to do with what happens if I plug in the negative version of the angle. Okay, and the thing to note here is that cosine is an even function because if I have some point here that makes an angle theta with the x-axis, then the cosine of that angle is the same for both um, cosine of theta and cosine of negative theta, okay, because the x-coordinate for both points would be a positive x-coordinate. So this is equal to 4 plus 4 cosine theta, okay, so we have um, some x-axis symmetry here. Okay, so that'll be useful when doing our sketch. So let's make our table of values. So I have theta and r here. So I'll do theta here at 0, um, pi thirds, pi over 2, 2 pi thirds, and pi. Okay, when theta is 0, I know that cosine of 0 is 1, so this will be 8. Okay, at pi thirds it's one half, so I get six. That pi over two it's zero, so this is four. At two pi thirds um, it would be negative a half, so this would be two. And at pi, cosine of pi is negative one, so I'd have four minus four, so I get zero here. Okay, so I can go about plotting those points to help me get my curve. So zero. 8 here, so an angle of 0, that'll be along the x-axis, and then a distance out of 8. 
8 right here. And then I have this point of pi thirds 6. Um, pi halves 4, let's do that one next. Pi halves is right here at, um, along our y-axis, but we're out a distance of 4. Okay. Um, let's save the pi thirds and 2 pi thirds for last. Pi is a 0, that means I'm going to make an angle of pi, but I have no distance. The radius is 0, so that's at the origin. Okay, so let's look at plotting these um, pi thirds and 2 pi thirds. So pi thirds is about here, and 2 pi thirds about there. So along pi thirds, we're going out this distance of about 6. And along the um, 2 pi thirds, it's a distance of about 2. And then we want to look at connecting these dots in a smooth fashion. So it turns out they're connected about like this. And then we also have some symmetry going on. So I have a point here, here, and around here as well. So we can finish completing our curve and see that we have this nice heart shape here. Um, and this is called a cardioid. Okay, so we'll continue looking at um, polar curves and calculus with polar curves um, in our upcoming classes. Let me know if you have any questions.